Well, thank the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, Stan was supposed to preach here. <laughs> and I'm not going to attempt to preach. However, I'm a pastor and I didn't get to preach this morning, so <laughs> it's liable to get on me. Stan and, Stan and Dean are men of great vision, and over a year ago, the Lord put it on their heart to, to, to start this Revive America tour. They just felt like that the church needed to be drawn back and uh, to bring about a revival in this nation that we need so desperately. I, I, I'm not pessimistic, okay? Don't, don't get me wrong when I say this, but I, I, I got to tell you honestly an assessment. I can't remember a time when our nation has been as divided as, as it has been right now. The, uh, people are being ugly to each other. <laughs> I don't know how to say it, but we need a revival. A revival to help us get along with one another. And uh, there's a verse. I want, this, is, this is God's prescription for revival. I want you to see this passage. You, you know it. In fact, uh, I, I, when do we get it up there? Could we just read it out loud together? Is it on there? There it is. Let's read it. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Do you believe that? Yeah. Yeah. Now, now watch this. God said, if my people. Church, we got to own this. If there's going to be a revival, it's going to have to start with the people of God. We can, we can blame Hollywood. We can blame the media. We can blame the liberal politicians all we want to. But if there's going to be a revival in America, it's going to have to start with the people of God. We, we can get all fussy about the ACLU for taking prayer out of the schools. But if we're not praying in our homes, come on. If my people who are called by my name. <laughs> you know, one of the reasons we came here is because Stan didn't want us to soil the name of Toller. He's, when he said he was sick and he wasn't going to be able to come, Terry and I said, well, <laughs> we're not going without you, brother. I mean, uh, we need Stan. Stan uh, Stan's the boss. Have you figured that out? I mean, he, he, he's the driver, man, and he tells us when to be there and what to say and what to do, and we obey. When our, when our daddy was killed and, and Stan was 12 years old, our grandmother Brewster came to live, our mom's mom came to live with us and she sat Stan down and, and right there in front of Terry and me and she said, now boys, Stan is the man. He's in charge. And so at, since that day, Stan was the man. And so uh, when he said, you guys got to go to West Virginia and do this because it won't look good on the Toller name. <laughs> now, our daddy William Aaron Toller is a good name in Wyoming County. Am I right about that? And so we had to come because when a toller makes a commitment, we keep our word, we keep our promises. But I'm telling you what, there's a name above all names that I don't ever want to bring disrespect or dishonor to, and that's the name of Jesus. If my people who are called by my name will hum what? humble themselves. <laughs> our, our mom used to have some funny sayings. When we'd get a little puffed up, she would say, get off your high horse, boys. By the way, speaking of horses, there were no horses maimed or injured in the filming of that movie. My horse had to see a chiropractor, but other than that. <laughs> get off your high horse. She had another saying, don't get too big for your britches or you'll be exposed in the end. <laughs> Think about it. No, don't. <laughs> If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. You know what the Bible says? God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. I don't want God opposing me. <laughs> I'll take his grace. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray 
There's a lot about revival that I don't understand. I, if a pastor says that he understands it all, God bless him. I, there's a lot of things about revival that's a mystery to me. Some things that just are unpredictable about a revival, but one thing is for sure, there has never been a revival without the people of God praying. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. What did God say? He said, if you seek me, what? You'll find me. If you seek me with all your heart. Then look at this. Well, no, wait. Lord, watch this. Now, he's talking to us, church. Seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Well, you say, well, wait a minute. We're sanctified Nazarenes. We're not wicked folks. Now think about this. Do you remember when Isaiah the prophet got alone with God and he, the closer he got to God and he was a holy man, but the closer he got to God, what happened? The more he realized, I'm a man of unclean lips and my righteousness is like what? It's like filthy rags. I, put that quote up there that Stan uses this quote in his sermon from R.G. Lee the Great pastor, the great preacher, the great revivalist that says, if all the sleeping will wake up, if all the lukewarm will fire up, if all the dishonest will fess up, if all the disgruntled will sweeten up, if all the discouraged will look up, if all the divided will make up, if all the gossipers will shut up, if all the dry bones will shake up, and all the true soldiers stand up, we can have revival. <laughs> Now go back to that, that other passage there. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, what's the promise? God says, then I'll hear from heaven and we'll forgive their sin and we'll heal their land. Do you believe that? Pastor, would you come and lead us in a prayer for revival? The, the church needs revival. This nation needs revival. Never like we've ever needed it before. I want us to join our faith as Brother Phil leads us in a prayer for revival. Amen. Shall we all stand? Lord, thank you for the access and the privilege that you've given us as your children to come humbly but yet boldly before the throne of grace. Thank you tonight for the privilege of prayer. Many times, Lord, we failed you. Our nation's in a mess this evening. Help us as Christians and a church in these last days just before you come again to proclaim the holiness message and to help turn the tide back to the faith of our fathers. Our political leaders need you. Our nation needs you, Lord. And as we fill our churches every Sunday, how we need an outpouring and an anointing that education can't bring that knowledge will not do but the wisdom and the understanding that is given to us through the Holy Spirit will once again help us to be what you've called us to be Lord, we love America. We love our nation. We don't love what it's becoming. So help us to be the light. Help us to be the salt. 
that we read about in the Holy Word of God. And in Phil, and in Abel, and in Dewis, with your presence and your power to accomplish the task that you've given to us and set us out to do. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.